Hi guys, today is day 6 and we'll continue to talk about signal generation. We'll try to create an alpha that brings information on the short term. So again, for this alpha, for this new signal, okay, this short term variation signal, we will work on the forex major currencies. Why? The reason is very simple. If you have one signal on the indices, one signal on the forex currencies, one signal on the cryptocurrencies, obviously, when we will try to create a trading strategy, it will be nearly impossible, okay? You can create a trading strategy with one signal, but it's really better if you have several signals on the same assets. That's why today for this signal has we do not have so much time because I just have today, so the video of tomorrow, to create a strategy with the signal that I have. So I really do not have a lot of time and I will focus on the Euro USD, GDP USD and USD CAD. Okay? So we'll keep the same data set and we'll create our target. Our target comes from the book of Marco Lopez de Prado and we have also a documentation available on the MN Fin Lab, okay? It is called the triple barrier, but for us, it will be a double barrier. Why? Because in the Marco Lopez de Prada book, you have, for example, if you want to take a buy position, the stop loss there, the take profit there, and if during a certain amount of time you don't touch any of these two thresholds, we'll just do nothing. So. Minus one if we touch the stop loss, one if we touch the take profit, and zero if we do not touch any of these two thresholds in a certain amount of time, which is defined at the beginning. But for us, it will be a double frontier. Why? Because we'll just take into account the stop loss and the take profit threshold. We we'll do not have a condition about the time. And so, as you may understand, here, you will not predict, for example, the buy position and the sell position. I have created a parameters that will tell us, okay, we are in a buy position and we target a 0.35% of take profit. And I want that my maximum loss, if I take a buy position, will be 0.20%. And so first, with the labeling, you will see the time that you take in hour to touch the first barrier, okay? If it's negative, it means that you have touched the stop loss. And if it's positive, it means that you have touched the take profit. Obviously, the goal of our ML model will be to predict when we'll touch the take profit and enter in position when we have this information. The only problem that I see on this labeling method, and it's the same for the double frontier or the triple frontier method, if, for example, you have there minus 0.8, it means that we have touched the stop loss very, very, very fast, okay? And here, for example, 2.4, it means that we have touched the take profit very, very fast. But the problem is that these two values are very close, but finally, they are the exact opposite, okay? And that's why I prefer to use this as a dummy variable. Zero if we touch the stop loss, and one if we touch the take profit. So now we have to create some features to check the relation between the target and the features, obviously to find interesting features as for the previous signal. So we talk more some things that are related to the short term, the displacement, the gap, the short term variation, the volatility and so on. Then we create our different train sets and test sets we put the list of X and Y and we'll create the correlation. Okay, so as it's for the short term, I will try only to take the most correlated values and I will add also, okay, even if it's not so correlated, the volatility because it can bring a lot of information and there we have only the linear correlation, but maybe the volatility can be non-linear correlated. That's why I added these two variables. Then we look for the features importance. We see that all the features have a good importance in the model, so we will keep them. And now we'll not just apply the random forest classifier as for the previous model, but we need to do a little more work because to look about the very, very short variation, it's very complex. 
because you will have a lot of noise. And what I really don't want to have is correlated variable. For example, if I do df list x and I plot the correlation, I'm pretty sure that I will have a lot of correlation between some variables. For example, there, there, and it's only, or there, and it's only the linear correlation. That's why we'll apply a PCA that will allow us to remove all the multicollinearity, which means all the relation between the information. The goal is what? The goal will be to keep all the information, creating new variables, new features, which are 100% sure without any multicollinearity. And it can bring a lot of value in the model. So if I run, I can see now that I have a 60% of accuracy. And now you can say, okay, it's a very amazing model because as you know, if we have a risk ratio of 1.5, we need only an hit ratio, so a percentage of winning reds of 40%. Okay, but the problem is there. Here, we'll not enter in position if we say that we'll touch the stop loss. So even if it's a true prediction, it doesn't mean anything for us. So we need to take only into account these two values there. And so if we make the ratio on the winning trade over all the trade, we have only an accuracy, so a real hit ratio of 0.31. And that's the point that I wanted to highlight there. Even if a metric is good for data science, it's not obviously the best for financial data science, which is exactly what you are doing now. You need always to adapt the metrics to the problem. And there, these two values will help us to understand much more the model and how to apply it on a trading problem. And above all, the performance that this model can have on a trading problem, on our problem. So as I said, 0 0.40 is the equilibrium. There we have a small, small edge. So it's not so much good. So now let's apply a robustness test to see if we still have a good accuracy. Even if the accuracy is not a good sign, we still check if the accuracy is stable over the time, okay? And as we can see, we have an average accuracy of 0 0.64 with a standard deviation of 0 0.04, which is quite good, okay? But again, here, an accuracy doesn't mean anything for us, okay? I wrote that also in the notes of today and on the documentation of this signal, okay? Because the goal of this challenge is to show you how I work a little bit, how I document my processes. But the second goal of this chapter is to show you that data science is not financial data science. We need to use different metrics. We need to have a different approach. We are working with time series, but in data science, we do not work with time series, obviously. So we need to keep all these difference in mind when we want to approach a trading problem. So I hope you like this video. We have done with the signals. As you can see, it takes time to make signal because there we have some interesting signal, but I didn't optimize them because we have not the time to optimize them. For me, it takes me sometimes one week, two weeks, three weeks, only on one signal. That's why we can't optimize it there. But we will try to find interesting strategies with these signals tomorrow. And if I do not find any interesting strategies on the Forex major currency with this signal, I will try to create new signal very fast on the indices, the crypto market, and check if I can create a profitable strategy with the signal that we have generated. But again, the goal there is not really to create the profitable strategy, is to show you how I work and how our approach is different than the standard data scientist.